everybody, welcome to an Epic Mod AM Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are back at it again with another ranking style video as well as a short little review. You know, we gotta take a look at the last two figures in the set. We gotta see where they rank among the others. Today, we are ranking AEW Unrivaled Collection Series number three, and probably today, my John Moxley and whatever the hell, Adam Hangman Page or MJF, that review will go up later today as well, so you guys can look forward to that. But today, ladies and gentlemen, what the f*** is this fuzzy does? What is that shit? I'm feeling pretty damn good today, bro. Brad, I'm feeling pretty damn good today. Nobody can cut me down unless you cross the line. Piece of shit. But today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be ranking AEW Series number three. Riho in the house, Pac in the house. See where the rest of this ish goes. We got the rest of the set here. Young Bucks, Orange Cassidy, Darby Allen. If you guys missed the reviews, definitely go check them out. But we are going to rank this set. I'm really excited. Again, I wanted to, you know, we got to take a closer look at these two because we got to figure out where they're going to land in the set. They could come in at the tippy top. You know, they could be underrated. I figured they were the, probably the most least excited exciting, so I put them in the last review. That's typically what I do, but let's shut the hell up and dive into our review, shall we? So as you guys can see, we have our front viewing windows right here. You got Riho, the second ever women's figure in AEW history. And then we got Pac right here. We've had multiple Mattel figures of him. In your front viewing window there, on the side, you got a, you know, their series number down here as well as some images. AEW right there. On the back, you got signatures and photographs of both the talents right there. Rest of the figures in the wave, which we've already reviewed. Be sure to check them out. This attire is from All Out, and this Riho attire is from Dynamite. Other side of the packaging is the AEW logo, as well as two images of the talent there. But with that all said, guys, let's go ahead and crack these two out of the packaging and see where they rank among the rest of AEW Series number three. Alright guys, so here is Pac and Riho out of their packaging, and you know it is what it is, Brad. We're gonna get in all the details of it as you guys can see. I guess what we can do is just go ahead and knock Rio out of the way, and then we'll come back and knock Pac out of the way, and then we will rank AEW Series 3 from worst to best in my own personal opinion here. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just get into Riho's accessories, and we will move on to Riho herself and flip it over and do the same thing with Pac. So getting into Riho's accessories, guys, we do finally get our AEW. AEW Women's Championship and I gotta be honest with you, not one of my favorite championships, man, and in figure form, I don't know, I, it's pretty standard, it just kind of reminds me of like a, I don't know, it just doesn't look like a championship belt to me, it's really, really small, it kind of looks like a pocket watch or a bracelet or something, you guys can see the side plates right there, got the AEW logo in the middle, it just kind of looks odd, doesn't it? I, I don't even know how to describe it really, but I do like the little dot patterns, I've never really even noticed that, these little dots on the side here, but it does scale pretty well, it's a pretty Pretty tiny championship, and it's just kind of meh in figure form. It does look like, however, they stiffened up their strap because I remember on the ringside exclusive, a little bit of the bubbly Jericho, it seemed like the strap was really flimsy and it would not clasp together behind the figure. Like I had trouble, it was really, really flimsy. So it looks like they made it into a harder plastic. It's not super hard, but it is more like Mattel's, and now it does seem to clasp a lot better. So that is something you love to see. I don't know if they're watching because I mentioned it in my review that it was difficult to do. Are they? watching? Are they listening? I love you, Jeremy. But there's the Women's Championship. She also comes with an assortment of interchangeable hands. So out of the packaging, she actually comes with this pointing hand, or this pointing finger right here. So she has her pointing finger right there, which is nice to see on the other side. She has like this doorknob grappling hand, or like mic holding hand, or like just right, like an object holding hand. And then over here, she does come with a left fist. She also, she doesn't come with any other fist. It's just one, uh, or right fist, I'm sorry. One right fist. She comes with like a waving hand. I don't know if this is part of her entrance there. It's almost kind of like she has a like a like a single card or something is kind of what it looks like. But it's like a fluttery waving slash sleight of hand karate chop hand. And then we get a other doorknob slash mic holding grappling hand. And then you also get opposite hands of that. So you get two of the little relaxed slash sort of like, I don't know. It's reminding me of like Yu-Gi-Oh or something. I don't know. Ha! You activated my trap card. My grandfather's deck doesn't have any crappy cards, Kaiba. I'm going to have a glass of milk. I don't know. Yu-Gi-Oh fans, stand up. So getting into Riho herself, guys, as we can see here with the head sculpt, I honestly, ah, oh man, I'm not really feeling this one. I think the likeness is there. It's not perfect by any means, but it's not like, it's not like a great head sculpt. It's not even really a good head sculpt, but it's not horrific, you know? I can see the likeness there. I just think the head shape is a little bit too big, maybe. Uh, I like the hair color. I like the, uh, I don't know, I think it's the expression more than anything is really what it is and like the mouth, but I really like what they got going on with the attire. I like how you got the painted on neck thing here that comes 
comes down in the sculpt and then onto the top there with the pink and white is really clean. It reminds me a lot of the Elite 81 Bianca Belair. But the shoulder piece looks really good. How this like is attached right here and everything. It doesn't hinder articulation. That's really nice. You got the same Sasha Banks like effect where the painted on straps. You got her wrist gauntlets right here in white. You do have her weight, her white wrist wrap. You have her white waist wrap. White, white waist wrap. White waist wrap. White waist wrap. Jesus. Got the pink designs going on there. You got the white knee pads that are open in the back. With that. That's pretty clean right there. This is pink underneath. I honestly have thought about just cutting this off, bro. Just cutting this off, but I think, I don't know. I feel like it obviously won't be completely Riho, but I don't know. I feel like this jongling around like this gets on my nerves. I feel like just popping this off and just having a pink lower, t like a lower, I think that would look actually kind of badass. I don't know. It's just like this thing like wobbling around is just annoying to me. It doesn't hinder articulation or anything. I just think that it would be better. I don't know. It's just, it's just how it keeps like loosity. And, you know what I'm saying? It just... Anyways, guys, you get the upper thigh cut right there. I honestly honestly don't know how I feel about the thighs. They kind of look fake or plasticky to me, even though they are fake and plasticky. I don't I don't know what the hell I'm saying. You get what I'm saying? It just kind of looks like they're just straight down, and they don't really look... I don't know. Just shut the hell up, Brad. You don't know what you're saying. Down on the boots, you got some nice sculpt right here. All of this is sculpted. I like the way the feet look and the kick pads. They do look good. One thing I don't like, though, is it doesn't seem like there's any lower boot rotation. Like, this is just... It's kind of like Montez Ford, you know? Like, this all goes together. There's no rotation rotation on here. The thigh is singular, which I do not like, and then the foot is its own deal there, so that is kind of uh, disappointing for me. I really don't like when they do that. I want all my figures to have boot rotation, so that's kind of crappy, but I don't know. I'm kind of impressed with this figure. I just, I, I don't know how I feel about it. There are some, you know, some things I don't really like, and I'm, I think Riho's super talented. I just think she goes a bit soft in the ring. I would like to see her hit a little bit harder, but I think, I just wish her, her strikes and stuff were just with more force or something. I don't know how to describe it. Maybe somebody knows what I'm talking about, but there is Riho. So for your Riho figure comparisons, guys, here we have Riho up next to Sasha Banks, Asuka, Charlotte, and Bailey, and I think it could work. Like, I don't think you'd have any problems. Like, getting up into the nitty-gritty, they look pretty good next to each other. I think you could easily have matches between all these. She fits right in. Maybe she's a little bit tall. I, I don't think, I mean, I don't think, maybe she should be her height or shorter. I don't know. Maybe her height is an issue, but it's not the biggest deal to be honest with you. I'm not really, you know, I'm not gonna fight you about it, Brad. We're not gonna have a tussle about it, alright? So you can get in there do whatever you need to do. I think it still looks good and everything like that. But that is Rio up next to the rest of your WWE women's figure collection. We only have Brandy to compare her to in the AEW division. So when we get Nyla Rose and we get other talents in AEW, maybe we can do that comparison as well, which we will. But there you go. And then if you wanted to see her up next to Cody and Kenny Omega, well, there you go, Brad. You got you got both of them. If you wanted to see her up next to the men's figure, if you wanted to get up in there and tussle with your men's figures, have some good intergender matches, there you go, Brad. Riho, Kenny Omega, Cody Rhodes. So for Pox accessories, guys. He comes with two interchangeable head sculpts, and he also comes with a steel chair. We have never seen a steel chair from Jazzwares before. We have seen a table, so we're yet to get a ladder, it seems, to complete the trifecta. Why won't you focus? Anyways, as you guys can see, we have the steel chair right here. It's got a nice metallic look to it. It's not matte. It actually has like a sheen to it, like a real steel chair would, and I have found that it's incredibly complicated when trying to put this thing back together, so I would recommend if you get this pop figure, open it and close it very softly, like so, like I'm doing right here to open it because if these things come unclasped, it's kind of very complicated. There's so many like ports and holes and like little studs or stick offs, little. <laughs> little ish, you get the deal. And uh, it's kind of difficult, so I would recommend just barely clasping it like that, but I like the sculpt and everything. I think it looks good. It looks like a steel chair. Reminds me of a folding chair, so you love to see that. And I'm cl I'm glad that we finally got a weapon outside of a sledgehammer, outside of a table and stuff, so there's that. And then he comes with two interchangeable head sculpts. Now, the first one is going to be this one that I think is, you know, just the, the entrance head, you know, where he comes out and he's got the hair in his face and then he flicks his head or flaps his head and the hair goes back. And I like the likeness on this. I actually think I like the likeness on this head sculpt more than the interchangeable one or the one that comes out on it out of the packaging, which you guys can see here. So there is the other head sculpt with the long hair, and then here's this one with the nice beard. If you guys want to just pop these off, it literally just pops right off, and then you can just, you know, plop it right on there. I think what would be cool is to have kind of like DC did with the Batman animated series. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but they made like a whole expressions pack where they had multiple head sculpts, multiple hands and stuff that came with a specific figure. So I think a ringside exclusive expressions pack with a bunch of different head sculpts for different guys, like a yelling face, a smiling face, pissed off, determined, talking, you know, different head sculpts, bleeding, stuff like that would be really cool for AEW figures to do. Maybe a ringside exclusive pack, but there is Pox accessories, guys. 
So getting into pot, guys, as you guys can see, we've kind of discussed the head sculpt a little bit. I don't entirely hate it. I don't think it's perfect by any means. A lot of people were dragging this head sculpt. I don't think it's that bad, to be honest with you. I feel like the eyes are just a little bit too close together, maybe. I feel like if they widen the eyes just a hair, it would be perfect, possibly. We're going to compare it to the Mattel Custom BEW head sculpt I got made forever ago, which is just still perfect to this day. BEW nailed it, but going down to the torso, I, I like it. It's a bit flabby, you know, but Pac is still sculpted. He's got everything. He's got his painted bicep bands and everything like that. I think this is the first time we're getting this torso. Uh, yeah. So that's good to know. It's not loose or anything. I just kind of plopped it off there. He's got his black wristbands on. I will say this. This right hand is pretty loosey-goosey. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that football right there. That's not good football, Brad. These trunks are very nice. I like this. It just doesn't have the Neville logo on there. You got the gray on the sides with the black. Everybody knows the signature Neville or Pac design right there. Double jointed arms and everything going down. He is on ball joints like every other AEW figure. You got the black knee wraps that are synonymous with Pac. You got the black and these are the same knee pads he wore in WWE actually which is kind of crazy upper thigh cut right there everything's good double jointed knees look good and the kick pads look really good I like the black kick pads and stuff but this is where it kind of loses me Brad they didn't give him boot rotation and I, that is absolutely absurd that they didn't give him boot rotation I actually can't even believe that that's a thing because uh yeah it's just it, there's no cut right there unless it's just super glued and both of them are like that bro I can't turn right there and I don't think they gave it to him which is weird because Kenny Omega has them. And wouldn't you think they would, you know what I'm saying? They would give him Kenny Omega lower legs? I don't know. I guess maybe because they, they, everybody gets their own unique scope, which is really good. But we need boot rotation, man. I love the details in the, in the kick pads because those look like real kick pads and everything like that. But we gotta have boot rotation, man. That's not, that's not good. We gotta have boot rotation. You get the ankle pivot in there. The rest of the articulation is pretty good. Like the double joint, the double joint arms are good. Everything like that. If you guys want to see his ab crunch is really good. Like, he can go all the way over, you know? It does, if you get too deep into it, he will pop off, but he can still get deeper into that because of the way they make the waist there. He can do the split Cs. He got the upper thigh cut, double jointed knees and all that, but, dude, gotta have boot rotation. That's a no-go for me, Brad. So, for your Pac figure comparisons, guys, here is Pac, the new AEW Series 3 Pac, up next to the Elite 55 Neville slash Custom Neville head sculpt that I got from BEW, which I love so very much. And you guys can see they pretty much compare pretty damn perfectly. I mean, I think the, the size and everything is pretty good. You can see two different companies' takes on pretty much the same character, but let's go ahead and get in here because I want you guys to see these heads here, and I just love the way that this one looks. What we did was I sent the, I think it was like the NXT Basic off to BEW and then he turned it into this right here, which I freaking love, but you guys can see, I mean it's basically the same exact thing. I mean, it's, you could pick whichever one you want, but they're basically the same, and I don't know, I just I just love the BEW custom head sculpt. It's, it's one of the earlier parts of my collection. I've had that thing for a very long time and I hold it near and dear but there is your pop figure comparison with Mattel and then for your AEW figure comparison guys we have Orange Cassidy, Cody and Darby Allen up next to the pop figure and I think these scale pretty damn well together I think all of them look great really sick how we are actually building up our AEW figure roster you take these four guys you put them together with Jericho you got the Bucks you got Dustin you got Kenny we legit are building up rosters over here with Moxley MJF I mean and even Adam Hangman Page Pentagon and Phoenix I mean we are literally building this thing up man it's super exciting to see can't wait to see series four five six and the rest of them but that does it for your pop figure comparisons all right guys it is now that time of the video where we are going to rank aew series number three from worst to best in my own personal opinion now this is the part of the video where i have to remind you guys how the ranking works and you know everything going on so the first thing i want to get out of the way is just because a figure comes in at the bottom of the ranking doesn't mean it doesn't have any redeeming qualities whatsoever and it's just the worst figure ever made and just because a figure is number one does not mean it is without flaws and that it could not be improved in some way. And to remind you, this is my own personal thoughts and opinions on the set in review. The next thing, what goes into this? What goes into this ranking? What's the criteria for the ranking? Excitement level for the figure. Posability. How I'm going to use it. How accurate. How good does it feel in the hand? Those are just the top five that come into my brain. There's probably some other ones that I left out. However, let's get into the ranking. Coming in at the bottom, guys, I have to go with Riho. Now, it's no offense to Riho right here, but she just, I, I just wasn't that excited for it. And one thing that really hurt this figure is, is the head sculpt I'm not very big up fond on and then no boot rotation really really doesn't make me feel good Brad I don't I don't like that whatsoever and yeah that's that's pretty much where I go from there Brad I had to put Riho at the very bottom it had to be somebody and I chose Riho coming in at the number five ranking I am gonna go with Pac Pac 
Pac is coming in at the number five ranking. I think the head sculpt could definitely be improved upon. I like it from the neck down. I actually do think it's pretty uh, quite nice figure and everything. I just hate that there's no boot rotation. That really irritates me. I really don't think this figure is that bad. I think that just simply no boot rotation really hurt it in the long run. And I love Pac. I love Neville. I love Pac. I think he's fantastic. I think he's great at what he does. But his figure did not replicate that for me. And no boot rotation really did it in for me. So I had to go with Pac at number five. Coming into the number four spot, guys, we are going to go with Matt Jackson. Now, for Matt Jackson, I love the attire. I love the tassels and everything like that. The only thing that made this drop below the number three, two, and one is the head sculpt, man. Matt Jackson was the best figure in Series 1 as far as I was concerned. I thought he looked the best. The head sculpt was the best. I liked the way it felt in the hand. It was really great and everything. And while these attires are great, the skin tones are updated. They look really good. This Matt Jackson head sculpt did not hit the mark, so he falls down in the ranking to number four. Coming in at number three, guys, we're going to get into his brother Nick. We are going into Nick. Now, slightly, I, I think they're pretty much equal. It came down to who had the better head sculpt for me, Brad, and I just liked Nick's a little bit better. I like his headband. I like, uh, I love I, I like the expression better. I just think that this has more likeness to Nick and this is actually better than his first series as well so that bumped him up as well. He comes in at the number three in the set. Now this is where it gets really really hard Brad because I think both of these figures remaining are excellent. I really do enjoy them a lot and for that reason guys I'm going to go with Darby Allen at number two and Orange Cassidy freshly squeezed at number one. I just get excited when I look at both of these man. It's really really tough. If you said Darby Allen was the best in the set I wouldn't even argue with you. I just, when I look at this Orange Cassidy figure, man, it just hits different. Even though the Darby Allen feels phenomenal in the hand, if you have either of these figures, you know what I'm talking about. I think the only reason Orange Cassidy beat out Darby Allen is I was just slightly more excited for Orange Cassidy's figure over Darby Allen's. And another thing is that, you know, Orange Cassidy's in the pick fed. He's on the Vindication roster. We're going to get a lot of usage out of this guy. And Darby Allen has not been seen in MDT just yet. You know, he's not a part. We haven't signed him to a contract. <laughs> That's not to say we're not looking at him. You know, we may be keeping a close eye on the guy. I think he'd fit handsomely into the Iron Man or Extreme Divisions. But right now, Orange Cassidy is a member of the MDT roster, and he's super fun and super creative to use. So I went with Orange Cassidy at one. So just for recap, Orange Cassidy at the un numero uno. Darby Allen at the number two. Nicholas Jackson, Hudson, Kane, Cage is three. Matt Jackson, number four. Pocathy at number five with his no rotation of the calves. And then Riho at the final finale spot. Again, if you guys would like to grab any of these, go over to Ringside Collectibles, WrestlingFigures.com. Riho fell on her face. That's not her face, you dumb jackass. That's the back of her skull. Or the back of the neck, as Michael Cole likes to say. Stupid idiot. But if you guys would like to grab these, you can pre-order them over at Ringside Collectibles, WrestlingFigures.com. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. Let's go ahead and get into the random shout-out for today's video, guys. And this shout-out is going to go to Sellout, who says, MDT, don't cross the line. Ohio, damn. Alabama, he 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 he. I'm across that line and get a touchdown. You love to see it, Brad. Roll Tide, Alabama National Champions. Two days ago, if you guys watched the Football National Championship, I don't know if you're a sports fan, college football fan. You might be. But if you guys didn't know, I'm from Tuscaloosa, title town, home of the Alabama Crimson Tide. And we brought home another national championship just the other night. Love to freaking see it, Brad. But a huge shout out to Sellout for that comment. I like the football comparison there. like to see it. But anyways, guys, I'm getting out of here. Let me know what your ranking would be down in the comment section below. I imagine it would probably be somewhat similar to this, but it may be different. You may think Riho's the greatest figure in the set. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at My Damn Toys, and I will see you guys in the next video. <gasps> Don't step over the line.